Man, the trucking industry just doesn't want guys like me. Tell you all about it, coming up on Ride with Kev. What's well, good, you guys, and welcome back. Um, got a couple truck videos filmed, but kind of felt like it was time to address this because it's been six months since I got out of a truck, and a lot of guys have, not a lot of guys, this channel was started on trucking, and so I figured I'd give you guys the update, kind of let you know what's going on. I post a teaser uh, in the community page, so got a couple questions about that, and figured I'd answer it. So this video will probably be, as my usual, a little bit all over the place, but this is about trucking and my future and what's been going on. So here's the update, and I'm going to compare it, not that they're the same, but I will show you or kind of compare it to when I was in the Marine Corps. And when I was in the Marine Corps, if you follow along with this, I went on several deployments. And leading up to a deployment, nobody wanted to go on deployment. Who wants to be gone on a ship and overseas and six months and you miss this and you miss that and all the stuff you're going to miss. And you go do it for six months and... You wouldn't really spend a lot of money because you were in the middle of nowhere and you'd save up money and three meals a day and you get up, go to work, and then go do the ship, watch movies, you know, hang out and do whatever, play spades or whatever in the barracks or in berth down the ship and just depending on where you were at. And you'd get home and invariably for about the first two months, all guys would say was, I can't wait to go back out on deployment. That was, you know, there's just, that's just the life. It's much like trucking. You're out on the road. You can only drive so long. You shut those curtains. You watch TV, sleep, read a book, talk on the phone, do whatever you want to do. It's not as stressful as it is being home with kids and bills and wife and the old car needs this and mowing the grass and going here and running there. You have to deal with all that when you're out on trucking. So trucking has its benefit. And so when I got out of a truck in November, there is always the, the draw back to trucking. Oh, I'm like, oh man, because it is a lifestyle. And if you're a driver, which I like driving, it's not bad. I mean, yeah, there's you know crappy truck stops and all that. You take the good and the bad. But after about two months, you start realizing some of the things that you didn't like about it. You get past the phase of how easy it was. And you start kind of going, oh, you know, I really didn't like sitting in this ship. I really didn't like driving to this area. And that was always, I guess, for me, the draw to being an owner-operator was it's your truck. You do as you do is your business. But, you know, my wife and I and how we set up, you know, never, I will never give anybody financial advice. But, you know, we have buckets, you know, and there's the vacation bucket and the bill bucket and the kids' college fund and the emergency fund. And there is a bucket for Kevin starts a business. And so we've been getting back into that mode. Again, I got out of a truck in November and it was the holidays and then there was back to school and then my father-in-law had open heart surgery and so we kind of had to get through some cycles of life. Thank God I was here. But we've started about a month ago going, all right, what are we going to do for this business? And one of the things that I am good at, one of the things that I enjoy is trucking. And so again, this is just an update. This isn't me whining and crying or bitching or throwing a fit or being Debbie Downer or being negative on an industry. I'm just telling you my experiences. And so before we get into this, I will go ahead and answer the question because I know the trolls are, you know, people are going to say, well, you know, Kevin, you can just go buy your own truck and do your own thing. I say, yeah, I can go buy my own truck, my own trailer, my own insurance, my own permits, my own toll tag, my own IFTA, my own trying to get on with find brokers to find loads, get on the DAT load board. I could do all that, but that's not the step that I feel that I'm at. I was a company driver, and I moved up to lease driver, and tried to take the step as a owner operator. So, but I was never going to go pay $80,000 for a $50,000 truck. I've been waiting it out, waiting the, while those things were going on, watching the market, watching the market. And well, how do I know they were charging $80,000 for $50,000 trucks? Because the exact same truck that was $80,000 is now $45,000. They are everywhere. There are plenty of trucks to choose from. But I started looking at companies to lease on. I'm going to go, if I want to go buy a truck, get back into trucking, I'm me. You are not. I understand that. My situation, your situation, everybody's situation is different. And I was never going to go out and just 
run freight, run for months at a time, and and, and make you know I may gross four hundred thousand dollars in own operator. That's not where I'm at, and that's okay. You might be. It's possible. But I tell you what I'm running into, and why I even titled the video "The Trucking Industry Doesn't Want Me Back." That's because the trucking industry does not seem like it is made for guys like me. Emotional, damn it! And I guess you know that maybe some some people are like. You know, that was common sense. You know, I was like, I want to go run a truck and run freight and take on some risk and be my own thing. But, you know, I'm not that good in three years of, whole three years of trucking. I'm not really good. You know, I want somebody else to handle my back end part. That's what she said. <laughs> but, you know, so I started looking at companies and here's what we're running into. There is, we'll call them company A. And this is a, a bucket of companies. So I've talked to a couple and received this same response. And this is how that conversation goes. Hey, I want an interested an owner operator coming to work for you. It says you guys hire owner operators. Well, absolutely we do. And most of them are mileage. Here's our mileage rate. Okay. Um, you're responsible for your truck. Got it. You're responsible for your maintenance. Got it. Your fuel. Yep, yep. We'll, we'll let you on our insurance. You'll pay for that. Uh-huh. You'll, you'll, you'll pay for everything. You're an owner operator. You can work for us owner operator. And then we will assign you a dispatcher. They will tell you where you're going to go, when you're going to go. It's not forced dispatch, but you're going to hear, this is all we got. And you're going to go run under us. And if you go to work for seven days, we'll let you go home for one day. You just got jammed. Excuse me? No, no. If I'm going to assume all the risk, I'm going to run my truck how I want to run my truck. To me, right, wrong, or different, the purpose of leasing onto you is I'm going to go run your freight. I'm going to be a driver, I'm, but I'm assuming all the risk that has its perks. One of the perks is you might get paid more, or you get to run how you want to run, where you want to run, and go home when you want to go home. You know, it's not like if I'm paying for everything and I go home for 10 days, that doesn't cost the company anything. But a lot of these companies in the company A bracket basically want to run their owner operators like company drivers, just make us take all the risk. Not doing that. So we'll go to company B, the big blue star, the virtual carrier. There are several of them out there. And they, here's how that conversation goes. Yeah, hey, this is Kev. I'm thinking about uh, uh, buying a truck and coming and leasing on you guys and running free for you guys. What can you tell me about your company? You don't own a truck yet? No, no, I've got the money in the bank. I've got the truck line out. I, mean, I don't own a truck yet. Call us when you own a truck. Click. Like, we're not talking to you. We're not wasting our time. We're not investing anything in you because you don't own a truck yet. And while I'm good, I'm not about to go spend 50 grand, 60 grand on a truck and then hope I can get hired on somewhere. That's, that's, I don't mind risk, but that's way out of my purview as far as what I'm willing to do as far as risk. And then there is, I guess we'll call it Company C. I, I've looked into them a little, and this is, we'll say, like your JB Hunt, uh, your USA truck. And that is, they'll bring you on as owner operator. They have a load board, but I even talked to some guys like in person about JB Hunt. And they're like, here's the problem with JB Hunt is like they have, I think it's, and I may be getting them mixed up. I don't know. They have like, like a, a company load board. And they said they'll put 1,500, 2,000 loads a day on that thing. And then the independent contractor load board might get three, 400 loads. So you're an owner operator. You can run how you want to run, but because they have company drivers, and I'm not saying that's a thing, they limit what you can do. They limit your access to the load board and where you can go. And while that may be the only option I have if I continue down this trucking road, it's not really the one I was looking for. I really like the virtual carrier. We're like, hey, we're going to handle all the paperwork stuff. We'll give you some discounts on this, that, and the other. You go run your business. We don't own any trucks. We just want to collect money off the freight. And it's DAT load board, you know, truck stop. It's not even their freight. It's, you know, just load board. They're running your paperwork for you. That's really what I was looking for. But it just really is starting to feel like they, most people want owner operators who want to run like company drivers. And I'm not going to do that. I don't, I had the best dispatch ever, dispatcher ever when I was over at NT. But at the same time, it's still a dispatcher. I can't see the loads. I can't, not that they were, I'm not saying they're lying, but I'm saying they would be telling this is what you got. And you still, if you have a dispatcher, you have to run where they say to run because they have, they hold the golden key to the load board. So you're trying to find somewhere that will take you on, but those companies won't talk to you. So what am I going to do? I don't know. We are looking at several different business opportunities. Like I said, I want my own business. And if trucking doesn't want me back, I got options. 
I, we're living our best life or whatever the crap that is that they say. So the trucking update is we're still interested in trucking. It has still always been a viable option, but I'm only willing to do it on my terms. You've all heard the saying, know your worth. Well, I know my worth. I know what I bring to the table. I know what I need to make financially, and I know how I want to run. Because if you go out there and you run how somebody else wants you to run, you won't run long. Ask me how I know. You know, I'm trying to, if I'm going to go back into trucking, if I'm going to go spend the money on a truck from taking money away from my family, it's got to work. And it's not going to work being a company driver. It's not going to work if every time I want to go home, I'm getting flack. Or we don't have anything. Or this is all we got. That doesn't work for me. So if I'm a bad example and I'm a horrible person and I'm a failure and I just need to get out of trucking because that ain't the way the industry is, that's not a problem for me. I would like to get back into trucking. I can see how I could be successful because I've been successful, whether you believe it or not. But that's where we're at. We are watching the market. We're looking at contractors. We're looking at companies. But it's been rough. It's been a lot harder. I'll admit it. A lot harder than I thought it was going to be to find somebody to work with me. You know, I'm willing to pay all the expenses, take all the risk, bring a truck, but I need you to work with me. And it doesn't seem like a whole lot of people want to work with you. I understand freight is down. I'm okay with that. My expenses will be very low. But I will get you some more truck content. For those who are subscribers, like, what is this guy talking about? But the trucking content, I'll keep you updated. We are actively pursuing this future. So I'll let you know. That's a sorry for the ramble, but I figured I owed you guys an update after six months of what we were looking at. God bless. Let's get rolling.